Okay guys, so I slept in the room with the birds. I don't know, I don't want them to wake up and feel alone or like in a dark place, so I'm gonna wake them up now. Let's see what happens. Oh, you guys got loud voices. Anybody want to step up? It's okay. Do you want to step up? Come here. Step up. No? Okay. So if they're not just jumping out on me right now, I'm just going to let them relax and leave the door open. When you can't get a bird out of the cage and it's the first days, you just leave the door open. Let them come out themselves. They're going to be less territorial when they're out of the cage and they're going to step up to me much easier if they're here or there. It still could be hard for you to get them off if they're anywhere near their cage. And in that case, you would have to take them away from their cage first and then start working with them. But we know that these guys are pretty good. What's happening now is they're just being territorial. So sometimes I offer them a second time just to see if they feel like they missed their chance at getting out. You want to step up? No? Okay. All right. Let them be. They're eating. That's good. Okay, guys. So they've just been sitting in here with the door open for hours. Nelly came out and chilled on top. Just to give you guys a little reference, I just made my coffee on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, you're missing out on all the in-between in my life and what the birds are doing. So I'm gonna try to approach them again so that they know that they've had a little time where it's been safe, but also maybe they've been bored. So, oh, he doesn't bite at all. Step up. No? Okay, let's try Nelly. Nelly's a harder sell. So they're probably missing their mommy. Step up, baby. He doesn't bite hard at all. Yeah. Okay, you'll notice there's no toys in the cage. The cage toys were getting cleaned. I just took them out of the dishwasher. But here's the thing. When you bring a new bird into your house, aside from the fact that I washed all the toys, if you get a baby bird, they may be terrified of toys or not used to them. So that would be one thing. But in this case, for them to get used to me, you kind of want to take out the toys or only have one toy just so that they have focus on you. This isn't something you deprive them of. This is just something for in the first 48 hours. You want to make sure that you are their entertainment so that they trust in you so that there's not something in the cage that they can lean and depend on because ultimately if birds get stuck on their toys or stuck being in their cage it's going to be okay for you to feel like they're fine in there they're happy they have their toys when that is not okay it's not okay for these caged birds to not have a life outside their cages so it may seem weird right now taking the toys away or not giving it to them right away they'll get all their toys it's just that right now i want to make sure that they know that i will be fun for them and then I'll play with them and that they need not be depressed and then I'll bring their toys and they'll be excited now look look at Nellie she sees she sees you talking she sees that I have Monty Morty Monty she sees that I have Monty and uh, she's a little more trusting now they're good birds i mean obviously not a whole lot of taming has had to go on but he does feel a little more comfortable going back to his cage so i'm gonna let him do that and i'm gonna sit here with them and i'm gonna edit this for you so this is gonna be a little behind what you've just seen but yeah you're talking huh but i'm just gonna be with them all day now where are my birds my birds had their breakfast, had their lunch, we did the dancing, we did the tent thing with Cody, we got Leo real fat on food and Jersey too. Rocky, he's still chilling on his stand. But basically, all the birds are now having a good time outside, getting some sunlight, vitamin D in their Avery so that I can spend time with these guys and not worry about cross-contamination at all, which we are going to talk about. So today, Monty has been chilling with me. This is the tool that she uses to get him to step up. He actually steps up on my hands, but sometimes he's a little unpredictable. Sometimes like he won't bite at all. But I've been editing today and he just like, literally has sat on my computer 
all day. I'm just trying to get acquainted with him and let him know that, you know, he's fine and fun. He lets me pet his head, but if I like make too many forward moves, then he gets weary, but look, step up. Yeah, he just steps up. He's so cute. That's you. That's your cute face. So I just want to show you guys what you do with a new bird. You include them in every single thing that you do. These birds have had their cages open all day long. Essential, essential, essential. A lot of people think they need to come home and like let the bird adjust. Adjust to what? Like often the bird's been in the cage for a very long time. Now, last night, since we brought the birds home a little bit later and needed to get them set up, sure, we only played with them for about an hour or so and then put them to rest because it was a very big day. But today is a new day. So you always want to open the next day with them being free as much as possible. Now. Nellie has actually stayed in the cage most of the day. The cage has been open, but she stayed here. So she's a little more cautious. Let's just see if she'll step up. Step up, Nellie. No. So I don't know if you saw that. She kind of went for me. Do you want a head scratch? Okay, so almost. That just means that with Nellie, it's very important to get her out of the cage. More so than with Morty. Now, if you have two birds, which is an unusual situation, I don't advise any of you to go out and get two birds, but these guys are bonded, you can use something like this to get Nelly out and then just make sure that you include Nelly all day. That's important because the bird needs to know that this situation is going to be different. But in this case, it's okay. She's scared of the computer. So let's just put her right here. Nelly wants to go back. So this is a bird that either we're gonna have to isolate her from training with Morty. Now, if she wasn't tame and wouldn't step up, then I would be like, you have to separate the birds. You have to for training. But in her situation, she might actually not feel comfortable. Okay, it's okay. She might not feel comfortable if Morty isn't around. Monty. I can never get that right. So she might only want to be with Monty. And since they're both tame, that's okay. We can actually hang out with both of them together. So let me just go over that real quick. If for some reason you end up, wow, he came over to me. That's pretty good. She doesn't understand as much as he does. He's the one trying to make the leeway here. So I want you guys to understand, I don't ever advise going out and getting two birds, but a lot of you have made this mistake. Keep in mind, these birds are already friends. It's kind of like a Picasso and Jersey or how Picasso and George were. You don't want to separate them, but they're not exactly bonded in a way that they're laying eggs and not tame. She actually did a really good job with these birds. This is a very unusual situation. A lot of you want to go out and get your bird a friend, but what ends up happening is if you're unskilled with birds or a beginner with birds, not a good idea to come home with two birds. You really have to work with one, get to know how to work with one, and then afterwards, when you come to the conclusion that your bird needs a friend, you will still most likely be wrong because your birds will not end up being friends. And what will most likely happen is that you'll have two birds to bond with and bird number one will have less time. Most of the cases, this is true. In this case, these guys are both listening. Like In this case, both of these birds are pretty tame and they're chill with each other, but we do have to keep an eye on them. And she said that sometimes they have to be separated for that exact reason. So in this case, we can actually get both of these birds adjusted together. What's best is if George was here to play with one while I'm playing with the other, then they both know that the same thing is going on at the same time. This guy's a little more interested. Hi. You're a sweetheart. And he's not as scared of the phone. And she's coming closer now that she knows. Okay. And I want you guys to remember something very important. When you're rehoming a bird or bringing a new bird home, even for the first time, they are heartbroken. Like everything is new and it's not just new and scary. You might not understand yet how much emotion a bird has and what an attachment they had to their owner. So on one hand, they wanna be loyal cause that's how birds are. So they might not be showing you the affection you think you deserve right away because they're loyal to their previous owner. They might be scared and they might be depressed. So you have to consider that here. See when I talk like a little bit lower and like, chill she wants to come see what's going on yeah 
Yeah, they're both like making way over to me, which is really great. And they're tame, but that doesn't mean they're not gonna have their moments where they don't want me to hold them and they don't want attention and maybe they're upset. They need a lot of love. Birds need a lot of love. This guy likes listening to my voice. So I don't know if you guys know, but Monty is the one with a toenail missing in the front. And Nellie is the one with a toenail missing in the back. I've been keeping them company all day, letting them know that they're not gonna be locked up. This is really important, especially if you come home with a <laughs> bird that is not tame at all or a new baby, you have to let them know that your intentions is not to cage them. One, so that they begin to trust you. And two, so that they realize this is a different situation. And three, so that they don't just stay in their cage and feel like this is how it's going to be. This is your chance. It's your chance when you first bring them home to make your moves because they're hypersensitive. Kind of like when you go through a breakup and everything is sad and new and you're very aware. That's what happens with them. That's like, this is the time to make changes for the birds. Okay, another subject I think we should talk about. Clipping wings. These birds are clipped, as you can see. They're very calm, tame. They're not flapping around. If you are a newbie, okay, like never had a bird in your life, I get so many questions about this and I hear so many horror stories and that's why I'm saying what I'm saying. Now, for those of you new to the channel or new to me, I have flighted parrots. I support birds being flighted. I think it's healthier, I think it's beautiful, and I think the birds are happier. That does mean you're putting yourself at risk to lose birds. And also it's important to note that most of the injuries in a bird's home are because they were flighted. However, birds can also be safer because they're flighted if, you know, something is a threat to them in the home. If you are a new parrot owner or bird owner, a lot of you write to me and you're like, I took my bird out of the cage, but he's flying all over and he hit the wall and I don't know what to do and I can't tame him. Clip the bird's wings. I, I gotta tell you guys, when I got my first bird as a kid and most of us, all of us, we got clipped birds because that's what people did back then. There wasn't as much information on the benefits of birds flying. But if my bird wasn't clipped and I had this wild bird flying around at seven years old, it might not have ended well. It might have been like a nuisance to my parents, a danger to the bird, and very tough for me to tame and train this bird. So what I like to advocate is if you're new to bird ownership and bird companionship is to start with the birds clipped with the intent to have a flighted bird. And if you have two birds and you're bringing them home, there's no way. Like, there's just no way. I'm not saying this applies to everybody. There are amazing people out there that had done their research and studied really well and were ready to take this kind of thing on. I'm not talking about you guys, but honestly, if you knew how many sad messages I got, people, I got the bird out of the cage, like you said, the door's been open, but how do I get it back in? It's flying all around the house. When I hear that, I know this is someone inexperienced and this is dangerous for the bird. So I'm happy that this is happening so that we could go over all of this and really just cover bringing a bird home from the beginning to the end. And most likely we're gonna be rehoming these guys. So we'll cover that too and we'll show you how to properly rehome a bird and you'll get to see a bird rehoming story. It's all right, it's all right. They just like want to be next to me. It's cute. They don't let me sniff them though. They're not accustomed to sniffing. Quite frankly, I don't even like smell a good sniff. How does your Senegal smell? I really want to know. <laughs> <laughs>